Astăzi vom vorbi despre a doua temă care a avut cel mai mare număr de voturi după cea din live-ul precedent. Este vorba despre lucruri în Japonia și Kento ne va prezenta um, puțin despre experiența lui. Um, el a fost angajat în Japonia timp de un an. Ok, so, uh, so maybe we can also talk about a bit of questions. If you have sure. any questions about uh, what we talk about, then uh, please uh, give a comment uh, in the comment section of the live and we will try to pick them up as we speak. Yes, good point. And actually the questions are something that will make our talk more interesting because it's what you want to know. So feel, please feel free to ask and we'll try to answer everything as possible we um were thinking about speaking around like 30 minutes let's say we chose some uh, points to to speak about uh, something that we consider most more interesting for you guys um and then we will take also questions at the end if there are any but also as he said we will try to address them uh, during the live as they appear okay okay cool so we can start already. Uh, first of all, please tell us a bit about um, the company you worked at mm -hmm. and uh, what was your position? Okay, so I was working at an uh, audit firm which is called uh, PwC Japan and um, as the name suggests, um, it's an audit firm. So basically, we check the company's financial statement and uh, give an opinion whether the financial statement is credible or not. And it will help investors to base their decisions because if the financial statement is not reliable, then maybe we shouldn't buy the stocks or maybe the company shouldn't be listed in as a stock company and vice versa. And my job was um, doing some IT of the auditing process. Nowadays, more and more finance related documents are digitalized. So there needs to be like a sort of IT specialist. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this company was in the, the big four, right? Yes. Mm. Okay. Um, so the big four are uh, Deloitte, KPMG, PwC and EY, they are uh, for the most famous uh, accounting firms in the world and PwC is one of them and we are basically doing accounting and consulting and also some other services like legal support and taxation support. Mm -hmm. Okay, your position system auditor, yes. as you said. Um, Going further, what would be the application procedure for the job and how did the interviews, um, how were the interviews? Okay, cool. So first of all, like since I applied to the fresh graduate entry position after finishing my bachelor's, um, it's typical for Japanese bachelor's student to start job hunting one and a half years before the graduation. So when I was in uh, junior year of the university, uh, there was a like recruitment process of a lot of companies and PwC was one of them. So I sent application to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you started the, the job hunting quite early. Uh, in what process are you the job hunting to so find a job cu un an și jumătate înainte de a termina facultatea și uh, practic există un stereotip că uh, trebuie să-și aleagă un job stabil și să stea pe acea, în acel job până când se pensionează. Nu prea vorbesc foarte mult despre a schimba joburile. Yeah, it's a stereotype to pick the stable job and to stay there till the retirement. Yes. So, like, it's very important for Japanese people to choose the first job because there is a kind of uh, spirit that we will stay until the retirement in one company that keeps you for a long time. So, yeah, like um, we also think about what we want to do in the future, what our strengths are and what our motivations are. 
And also another things, important thing to know is that uh, we actually don't need to have the exactly the same major as we are professions are. So even if you get, uh, for example, programming job, you could still have the major in um, arts or maybe international relations. It really doesn't matter, but it's rather the company that will train for your skills as long as you have the basic um, education and also good communication skills. Mm -hmm. Deci ce este interesant este că nu trebuie să aibă, când ies de pe băncile facultății, o anumită specializare și să se ducă pe un job care are exact aceeași specializare. Pot să termine și artele cum ar veni și după aceea să intre într-o companie și să facă programare. Se ocupă compania de tot acest training, de la zero până la nivelul când pot să programeze, de exemplu. Foarte interesant. Stocks, yeah. Yeah, stock school. <laughs> so yeah, like um, people say that uh, the auditor's job and accountants are also working in an audit firm. Our job is to give uh, credit and trust in the stock market. So yeah, I think it's cool. Right. Um, how is the actual process? How, uh, how are the documents that you need to submit? Are they a lot when you apply for a job? Yeah, so when you firstly send an application, there are basically company-specific requirements. And then basically nowadays it's done on the website of the company. They often have a like recruitment-specific uh, uh, website. So there we submit some documents or we might fill out uh, questions, answer, And then, based on those uh, basically documents, where we talk about our like I don't know. Basically, we talk about our motivation and our dreams and our uh, what we, what I worked hard in universities and those general questions about soft skills, as well as we do often some aptitude test about the mathematics and also basic Japanese and also some personality tests. And based on those, um, we will be screened for the first uh, process. And then, depending on if we get uh, proceeded for the next one, then we will start meeting um, interviews. Mm. Okay, so basically you have this um, entry sheet that you fill up online. Uh, I must tell you that I, I also did this entry sheet when I tried to apply for Japanese companies. It's a very extensive and complex yeah. uh, set of questions, a lot of them, and mostly you need to fill them up in Japanese. So it's quite challenging to do this. And um, then if you pass this, um, you get to the interview phase. And the interview phase has three parts. Um, yeah, like for me, it has three parts. And actually, first two are not exactly the interviews, because the first one was like... A, group discussion mm -hmm. uh, when we get to work with also other candidates there are six of them and we kind of brush up our uh, discussion and to present uh, what we figured out to the uh, workers the PwC and then throughout the process of kind of our communicating and uh, summarizing and making preparing for the presentation the uh, workers at PwC is looking at how we work in a team and then based on those performance uh, we will be uh, selected or not for the next process. Mm -hmm. The next one would be? <laughs> the next one would be uh, essay writing and the interview about what I wrote in the essay. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because uh, they actually write this essay by hand with pen and uh, paper it's yeah. uh, quite uh, so to say old-fashioned <laughs> let's say it's primitive <laughs> basically i didn't bring anything to the uh let's say working how to say the interview room and i was just given a pen and paper and there was a topic which i have to write the 
essay about. And Within then, a certain time? Yeah, let's mm -hmm. say like 20 minutes or something like that. And then after that, uh, it was a manager that came to the room where I worked on writing the essay. And then he called me for the interview. And then he asked about what I wrote in the essay. And that was the big part of the second interview. And then he also asked me about my motivation. And uh, also he asked if I have any questions about the company. Basically, um, it's good to ask more questions because that this way we can show that to like our motivations to the company and interest and curiosity mm -hmm. to the company. Yeah, this part with the questions, it's similar to Romanian. It's good in a, during an interview to ask questions. Um, and there's then the third part, like the interview. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the third interview is was, was for me the final interview. So there were two partners of the firm, the PwC partners is like a executive position, which is like a top, the, those who have the responsibility, ownership of the company. And they ask me more about personal questions of like uh, what my experiences are, uh, what I did in university, what uh, my motivation is, rather than, you know, doing like topic discussion or anything like it was about myself, what I want to do, what I like to do, what I did, worked hard on. And then like it was like one hour interview, which was quite intense. And then the HR person came and followed me up for the the possible future uh, like procedure in case I get the in case I get accepted. Uh -huh. Yeah, like at that moment, my how to say getting accepted or not was not de just determined, mm -hmm. but he I was see. kind of yeah asking me about the stuff because like uh, since I'm an audit firm, uh, uh, I applied to an audit firm. If I get accepted, I'm not allowed to invest in a stock company because like I have to be independent from some clients and so on. So he was explaining about those things, which is very important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as Bogdan was saying, yeah, stocks, but unfortunately, if you are employed in such a company, you're not allowed to invest in the stocks. Uh, in the stocks in, from Japan, I think. Yeah, like the stocks which are public Local, in Japan. Mostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and basically, this uh, each section, um, like the three interviews and so on, everything is like within a. So from first interview to the second, it lasts two weeks. Yeah, basically, they give me the result and procedure mm -hmm. within few days mm -hmm. and then after that I needed to book the time slot for the next uh, interview mm -hmm. meeting mm -hmm. yeah it was easy uh, not easy for me because I was living in Akita a northeastern part of Japan and I was doing job hunting for the job in Tokyo so I had to travel a lot during those times and then also I had classes so I had to find time mm -hmm. right it was challenging <laughs> yeah but that's what typically like people do in bachelor studies mm -hmm. or some people who does it in master studies yeah. yeah so you will it takes time to like do the job hunting process even though you have classes or you want to study more we have some comments here. yeah yeah i think it's a good <laughs> timing to answer then i think it's not a question but uh, he's saying audit people as i see it they are market wizards because they can understand very good the company's numbers <laughs> yeah like uh, I was uh, no, I'm not an accountant and there are people who has uh, passed the difficult uh, accounting exam and they know really the best in the company about the financial statements and how to evaluate companies based on those numbers as well as also how to kind of check by going to the company how, if those numbers actually are reflected reflecting the reality but yeah and you worked with uh, auditors mm -hmm. like uh, accountants sorry but you weren't actually doing this job you're yeah like i was, uh, was working with accountants but 
we don't necessarily have the accounting certificate, but we were supporting the accountants who have the expertise, but we have the expertise in IT systems and mm -hmm. more like IT related stuff. And Victor is asking, why did you decide to start to study again and not continue your position? Yeah, that's very interesting point. Uh, good, good question. Um, so yeah, of course, um, I was not entirely satisfied with um, keeping working at the company. So that's why I decided to quit and proceeded my master's program. Um, yeah, so for the working condition, I would talk about it while I was <clears throat> pretty happy with the experience and the kind of skill sets I acquired during the one year. Uh, there was not much, uh, how to say, I, don't, I didn't think that it would be a good idea to stay in the company for more time because like, uh, I had to move to different project, although I liked the project which I was working during those one year. And also I kind of sensed uh, different expectation of the executives on uh, fresh graduate people to become more like a generalist rather than specialist, um, specializing in one of the topics such as data science, data analytics, which I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, also since there is a pretty large interval, uh, no, how to say, so you get the job secured in the third year of university and before you actually start working, there is like one year gap actually. And you will also learn a lot of different things and you will also change your mindset quite a bit if you for one year. So by the time I started working at the company, I already dreamt a bit about going to the master's program. Yeah. <laughs> you were actually also kind of preparing, like studying English for the, um, like getting the certification, the mm. TOEFL and... Yeah, it's quite... Um, complex <laughs> thing in my mind but um, yeah like uh, also I was thinking if the company can offer me the opportunity to work abroad mm -hmm. maybe it's not easy it takes time now it takes even more time because of COVID you know if I was staying in a company maybe I wouldn't be able to come to Germany or abroad so easily um, yeah Bogdan is asking is it harder for us to get a job in Japan. Yeah, I'm... Harder. I would say it would be hard for us uh, because we don't know the language that well or at all, which is quite a big important aspect. Yeah, like um, actually it is difficult, I think, not only because the language itself is hard, but also language includes a lot of cultural aspects such as using Kago and also like, how do I say, to not be so explicit about some things like for example about I don't know if senpai says something and if you are like very decisively um, counter arguing to what the senpai says and stuff like that I mean there are many w ways you can kind of tell like about the understanding the culture and stuff like that it's ne not necessarily a good thing but there are a lot of implicit uh, things included in the language, so um, I don't know, like uh, it might also affect a bit of the impression. But I think skill-wise, um, it shouldn't be a problem. Maybe it's language and culture a bit. Mm. And it depends also on in which company you want to get employment. Like if you want Definitely. to go into a tra really traditional Japanese company, there are uh, lower chances. But if the company is more global and international, there are higher chances for you to be accepted. Yeah, so those, I don't know, um, same uh, hierarchical relationship depending on the age and also to kind of understand Japanese implicit culture and stuff like that are of course not the main point of getting the jobs done and uh, keeping the companies forward. Mm -hmm. So. Let's say if the company is competitive and quite mm, generous or like diverse, then maybe there's a tendency that 
they don't care such small things, but rather they want good candidates, good talents. So mm. it's also a good way to see the company if they are diversified, if they are they respect diversity, and maybe they are likely to be more how do you say welcoming. Mm. Florin is saying there are also limited jobs for foreigners. Yeah, I I feel you. I think um, it's true. I think one of the reasons is because uh, there are more fresh graduate position than the positions for those who change the job to the other. At least you don't see them that much on the website as compared to the fresh graduate position for the first career. It, it, it's because uh, it's common for Japanese people to find a permanent job position in the traditional like mindset. Yeah. Right. Mm. That's a good aspect. So basically, they kind of want more people that have not much of an experience, I feel. Yeah, yeah, like... So they can be formed by the company, mm. trained. Like even the case of... Uh, PwC, there was a lower acceptance rates for, or it. I, I felt it was more competitive for the person who have work experience to get the job in PwC rather than uh, for the students to apply for the first position and get the job. Mm. Yeah. So they accept less people and yeah, it's demanding as well. I think we can take a bit of break from the questions and continue with our topic. Yeah. So we were left um, after the interviews and let's say you passed all of this and you actually did pass them. What happens after you enter the company with the training? Yeah, so luckily I got accepted by the company and then I started uh, with three months training. So in Japan, we start everything in April, unlike uh, European standard, which starts everything in autumn. So from uh, April, I started job training, of which was kind of like classroom training. We had some uh, case studies and we also had some lectures and we also had some like role play and stuff like that to experience the real work at audit firm and as a system auditor so yeah um, firstly we had some administrative stuff and then we actually had the course about accounting basics with uh, other accountants and then we moved to like uh, business basics which is we learned about logical thinking and powerpoint presentation and how to make presentation and then after that, we worked on a more system auditor task, which is basically involves auditing and how to audit IT systems and what we need to th like know about those theories. And then finally, we also had a bit of uh, coding practice. Um, it was rather like, it, I don't think it was that much, but so after Sorry, there was an ambulance. Uh, so after these uh, four parts, accounting basics and business basics and system auditing basics and the coding basics, we are good to finish those classroom teaching, uh, classroom learning, and then we actually were assigned to one project, one company, and then we will do the auditing of one company. But um, yeah. Firstly, we did some company analysis and made a presentation about our findings and findings of the company and findings of the last year's audit to the managers who's in charge of the company's auditing. Also, we did some online courses about um, marketing and accounting. And then after finishing this, I put I started working in a real project mm -hmm. and in the real project there are also like 
um, hierarchies and also different like groupings and about like how many people there are there and what positions do they have so typically how many people would be in a project let's say yeah um, so my job I said is a system auditor and it typically has a team of uh, big, like large number of members because it involves accountants and also system auditors. But uh, you will not uh, work closely with like all of those people, but with people who's related, uh, doing the related job as you do. And for me, there were around five to six people who worked closely with me, and then, yeah. So, mm -hmm. what pos positions do they have? Um, yeah, like for my task, there is a manager who will be finally responsible for everything, and there is a like senior people who's having a bit higher in position than me, and they will be like kind of teaching me more closely how to work on tasks. Managers are someone who's kind of in charge of the final output. So I won't be working always together. And there is also a technical specialist uh, working together with me. Actually, he's not from the same company, but how to say, he's not from PwC Audit, but he's from others unit of PwC, like being in charge of coding and programming stuff. They are like engineering stuff. Um, and also there was an intern uh, who entered half a year later than me and I was in charge of uh, taking care of the intern. Nice. So there were like five people. Mm -hmm. And all with really kind of different positions and areas of expertise as well a bit? Um, yeah, like um, everybody was from the system auditing mm -hmm. and system auditing job, but uh, the hierarchy wise there is a manager and also like I'm associate and there is a senior associate and an intern so like yeah it's, it's quite a complex structure yeah it's typical to have different uh, positions people mm -hmm. like in one project because uh, people with high like a position has high pay mm -hmm. per hour so you don't want them to work for tasks you Much, want yeah. <laughs> like them to work on an, only the important thing and they want me to work on tasks because my hour like my salary per hour is the lowest as like i'm the fresh graduate mm -hmm. in the first year so yeah that's how they kind of divide tasks based on the position mm -hmm. yeah uh, can you give us some names of or some domains of the clients what were your clients yeah sure um i'm yeah i think there are a lot of clients all over japan and basically if they are listed in the stock market we have a potentially a chance to audit them but uh, there are big japanese software company uh, or like i say sns communication company which we also do auditing and there is a uh, one of the largest are uh, how to say automobile car company mm -hmm. uh, which we do and also some chemical company and electronics companies insurance companies and so on yeah there are many companies that we will work and together big ones actually yeah globally and globally mm -hmm. because um they are mostly or almost always big ones because small companies are not listed on the stock market mm, yeah true. okay let me see some i think i can also give a name of the companies because it's online so <laughs> we have a client as a client like toyota toshiba sony and and so on mm -hmm. i think these are companies that we also know in Romania there are also big ones uh, let me read some comments a bit uh, Victor is asking how are companies in Japan dealing with the corona pandemic is there an increase in home office workers mm. yeah like um, 
where I worked, PwC uh, switched to remote, full remote from um, March in 2020. So last year in March means like they switched to full remote even before the, for example, Germany started doing lockdown, I think. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty quick decision. But I, th I would say like it's a rare case and we are not that advanced in uh, remote work. So I still see a lot of my friends working in the office. Mm. So not so good. I actually saw a news article saying how <laughs> Germany succeeded in kind of uh, changing from the uh, working from the office to the remote work and how the employers also found the benefits of doing that and in this article it was saying like Japan is not as good as in Germany I'm not sure but maybe it's true <laughs> uh, okay I've been saying quite different from Romania here at my first job they sent me to do the job after one week theoretic lessons Wow. <laughs> yeah, for for them in the case of uh, his company, he did more um, off the job training. Exactly. So as opposed to us who do more on the job training. So yeah, um, difference between on the job training and off the job training. Uh, on the job training is like you will be thrown into a project and then you will work and learn as you work. But off the job training is like you will be firstly sent to the classroom or you will be, I don't know, uh, having some lectures and so on to learn about theories behind and then you will start working. And there is a tendency for the Japanese employers to train um, by taking some time. And this is why maybe we are not, we don't have to have the same major as we are our position. Uh, our job because the company will train us yeah it's an extensive training basically dar deci la ei este mai mult uh, mai mult tendința spre off the job training adică să nu uh, să cum vețe să fie ca un fel de școală ce se întâmplă acolo uh, și după aceea să fie introdus treptat în diferite proiecte pe când la noi de obicei înveți mai mult stând pe lângă alte persoane supervizori Um, și după aceea ești puțin aruncat, cum a zis și Florin, <laughs> în, într-un proiect. Yeah, like, it was pretty intense. Uh, I always, we always had the time limit in kind of making an output. And we had to make an output in the form of presentation on the stage in front of all other colleagues and so on. And it happened so often. So, yeah, it was pressuring as well, like. So I think it's different from schooling a bit. Right. Um, Anza is uh, asking, do you use websites like Glassdoor to get informed about the vibe in a certain company? Ah. <laughs> uh, so for the changing the jobs, right? No? Uh, yes, or just like choosing the company you want to work in, I guess. Uh, yeah, like... Uh, How do you do the research? So it's about before getting the job. Um, yes, and mm. after, uh, after, if you want to change as well. Oh, okay, yeah. Check. So, yeah, like there is such a platform in Japan as well. I think uh, I was checking something like Glassdoor, but uh, Japanese version, which is called Vorkars. And they kind of give the radar chart of companies as um, evaluation based on the, uh, like, I don't know, motivation of employees, working conditions, uh, if it's a good uh, place for 20s to grow and uh, the business is going well and stuff like that. Yeah, I checked them, but um, I think I based my decision more on the job seminars, which I attended before applying and like actually listening to what employees say and what uh, what the employers said in the seminar. There was a big job fair and I kind of compared the PwC with other uh, consulting firms and also other IT companies. 
So basically in Japan it's common for companies to hold such seminars in which they talk about their companies. Yeah, like um, no, it's not the company, but it's the how do you say? There is an event uh, host which mm-hmm. kind of invites companies in a booth, and like there is like a big fair, like which you can see get to see a lot of companies in one de- one go. But yeah, also so you also went to certain companies that were holding events about their companies. Yeah, there is a booth, and like. If you go to the booth, then you will get to uh, like hear about mm-hmm. the, their presentation, and yeah, it's a good way to learn about a lot of companies. And then, if you're interested in a particular one, maybe you will follow up the their I don't know update on the company specific seminars and their selection procedures. Is it true that some of the transportation costs were uh, like given by the companies yes. supported? So for the interview procedure, uh, first of all, everything was paid. So I was uh, making the airplane travel because like uh, I was living far from Tokyo. And then so each time I was given uh, accommodation fee and transportation fee, which was good. And yeah, also even for attending the job fair and stuff like that, it's not all, always the case, but there are sometimes also those uh, hosting uh, organization kind of gives a bit of financial incentives for us to join. Yeah, that, that's really cool. I think it's really great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. You got help from them, financial support. So not only during the interview, but actually attending the seminar, sometimes you get some mm. uh, financial incentives and also the university sometimes pays a bit. Oh. Yeah, for attending such events mm-hmm. for the transportation costs that's really really cool we don't really i haven't heard in romania of something like this eu nu prea am auzit o romania ca o companie sau mă rog noi nici nu avem foarte multe seminarii din acestea mai avem niște târguri dar nu nimeni nu ți plătește transportul să zic așa yeah this is how much i think the companies or we care about getting the first job so it there are a lot of events a lot of internship opportunities a lot of seminars during the weekdays when i'm supposed to have classes so i was like uh shit i'm like living in akita and i cannot join a lot of them maybe if i were in tokyo i could get more of them and i have classes maybe some people don't take classes in those times and only do the job hunting so Yeah, there are a lot of things to do it's intense the whole process is intense and lasts for quite a long period of time yes some mm. people takes half a year for this so yeah i cannot imagine like doing this uh, as well as studying hard yeah and at the same time you are still in university and need to write your paper and study for classes Yeah, typically you will get the job secured before mm. the final year starts, I guess. So, I mean, final last one year, hopefully you don't have to worry about the job hunting. Mm. But the second half of the third year of the university, you have a lot to do for the job hunting. I would ask just a short question right now that occurred to me. What happens if someone cannot find within this time frame a job? Is it tragic? Is it? <laughs> How is it? Ah, uh, yeah. I think it would be very difficult. Um, one thing you can do is to um, delay your graduation, mm-hmm. because like uh, being a student and getting the first job is a privilege. Um, but also you will need to explain why you delayed one year and stuff like that it always comes in the form of questions because i don't know we are still st- stereotypical so if you do different things than majority maybe sometimes you asked why you do this and yes. if you graduate you will be considered in a bit different entries not as a fresh graduate but like semi fresh graduate or something It also depends on companies. Some companies don't care about it at all. And I agree with the idea because it doesn't matter. But yeah. Um, 
So either to repeat the school year or to uh, graduate and look for the semi fresh graduate position or to go to the graduate school and kind of extend the studies and do the job hunting again. Mm, I see. So not really good news. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But um, uh, looking on the bright side, um, I don't know why Japanese companies keep um, recruiting more and more people as uh, every year. So anyway, there are job positions open mm -hmm. always. Moving on with something a bit more relaxed, let's say, how were team buildings? How were team buildings in your company? Yeah, so I think it's quite a Japanese cultural thing that we have a lot of... Um, how to say bonding or like uh, team working pro like uh, activities, activities mm -hmm. and we get to work uh, so once a year we are given a field trip uh, which is paid by company and then we will go to a ryokan it's a japanese hotel uh, outside tokyo and it will be paid by the transportation fee as well and then we go there and we will have some seminar and some training in the afternoon and then we will actually stay overnight and then we will do some activities together on Saturday morning and then we will finish it so basically during those times we also have some occasion of um, maybe having a bit of nomikai or stuff like to together like inside the ryokan and also do some activities it's more like uh, networking and getting to interact with each other. Yeah, like it's basically for fun. For fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I. But it's a bit compulsory to go. Yeah, like since it's on Friday, you mm -hmm. basically need to attend at least um, half of it, and you are expected to also stay on Saturday morning as well, like in my case. So, yeah, it's a typical mm -hmm. thing. I think many many companies have something like that uh, what about the dress code this is a really big topic and i think a lot of people know those pictures with um, guys in suits with uh, like necktie and those briefcases they're carrying all the time is it true yeah it's I, true right it's true especially when you are doing job hunting Mm -hmm. um, after entering the job, I think it really depends on companies. Mm -hmm. In my company, it was okay to be like uh, dressed a bit business casual, so not in a black suit, but a bit like a jacket, and like wearing shirt with tie, uh, with color mm -hmm. and uh, pants, but not in a dark black pants. Um, so yeah it was business casual and only when we go to the client's office we wear ties and also depending on the client sometimes we need to be super formal because the company is like rigid company but if we go to more liberal companies like it company or so on then we could dress a bit more casually based on what they dress mm -hmm. so it depends on um the types of company that you have as clients if it's uh, the formality level of the way you dress differs there was also a class about how to dress and how to i don't know have the accessory stuff like what kind of things to choose and like i learned that bags should be something you can place on the ground and it doesn't go like this because like you need to have it like this like stylish and also the glasses have to be shouldn't be for casual because it doesn't look professional it has to be like this and this and this and i was also pointed out uh, you shouldn't wear this you shouldn't <laughs> do this and yeah yeah this is this is really interesting we we never had such classes courses i don't know this is really something unique for japan i think yeah and also depending on the job depending i think on the job, yeah, yeah. True. Mm. Okay, I see here some questions. What are your thoughts on Japan's nomikai culture? So just to be clear, nomikai means like to gather and drink together. Yeah. Much. So like in Japan, the 
work and the personal life is not clearly separated, unlike some Western cultures. So uh, we like often drink with employees, other colleagues, and after work, and we spend time until I don't know late, and then we go to work. So pretty much we are spending more time than we actually working with the other employees. I personally don't like it because I don't want to immerse my way of thinking into one organization. Rather, I want to have a bit of different way of thinking or different culture always to inspire. So, yeah, I try to avoid it sometimes when I feel the need. But yeah, like sometimes since we are not directing our communication style, sometimes attending those places are important in the sense that we can actually get to talk honestly uh, face to face about something which would be probably difficult at work when we are busy. So you open up a bit more. So yeah, yeah, like with alcohol. So <laughs> I think it's about the balance, but yeah, you don't have to join. <laughs> okay. For Florin's question, how often does the overtime happen? We are going to, to get into it right now. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I think it's what everybody wants yeah, to hear about. Right. So first of all, what are the regular working times? Um, yeah, so typically in my job, it was from 9.15 to 5.15. So with one hour lunch break and seven hours of work, and yeah like i did overtime not so often in the beginning but quite often in the end it also depends on uh, the season for the auditing because uh, when we are close to the year end uh, we have a lot of deadlines and we need to meet deadlines for whatsoever so it doesn't matter <laughs> If it's 5.15, we cannot finish because we have work done, uh, we have the work to be done. And yeah, I felt that I'm typically expected to do overtime of about two to three hours per day on average, because I don't know, that's how the system is. Um, you get some evaluation of uh, your work performance after a year then well, actually one of the matrix actually tests or checks how much work I did uh, in the amount of hours and it has to ex like uh, how to say you cannot count some activities like training and also se attending compulsory seminars into those hours but this uh, hours have to be close to 100 percent but actually seminars are part of our work hours right so mm -hmm. what happens is that we need to work more for the part which we attended for the seminars although they are compulsory so we ended up doing the overtime and then we get checked for those matrix mm -hmm. so you are evaluated based on how much percentage is the client work basically yes that's what they care about like the client and yeah sales pretty much and so let's say i had the uh, seven hours of work for five days and stuff like that and 90 percent of those must be spent on the client work mm -hmm. so if you do more than 10 percent during those seven hours for the seminar and uh, non-client related work then you need to kind of do overtime mm -hmm. in order to get uh, the matrix checked. But let's say a positive aspect, I mean, not positive, a normal aspect, I would say that is that uh, overtime is paid. And um, what is actually the salary package? What does it include? And then how much would a uh, beginner salary be? Yeah, so the beginner salary in Japan is typically around uh, 1,500 euros before tax for the fresh graduate position. And after tax deducted, it's 
1,300 euros. But this is like average for the bachelor graduate. And if you have finished uh, graduate school, then it would be higher, but it's not that different. And it also is based on the companies and also the location of the companies. If the company is in Tokyo, then it's typically higher than the average. And my company, the starting salary was around 2,400 euros before tax for the uh, bachelor graduate. Yeah, and what else? Uh, what the salary included as a package. Um, so actually 30 hours overtime was included in my package. So if I do 31 hours overtime, for example, 30 hours of the overtime is already included in the salary package. I get uh, paid only for one hour of overtime. Mm -hmm. And regardless of whether you do the overtime or not for the month, you will only paid for the additional of the overtime. So it's interesting because the salary already contains when you get employed the overtime so it's implicit that you will do overtime <laughs> yeah true um, i mean like if you do overtime the employers need to pay a bit like higher salary i guess also depending on the hour you work at like if you work late or if you work too early then they need to pay like 100 to 20 percent of the salary 150 percent of the salary and so on so maybe for them it's more beneficial and basically yeah the contract says like you get the high salary on the contract but there is also a bit small writing that it includes a bit of overtime and yeah like i admit as a school a student it's difficult to kind of spot on those small things but it's not quite good mm. so florin is saying so you are expected from the beginning to do overtime pretty much yes yeah. It's written there, also in the contract. It's included in the pay, the 30 hours per month. So, yes. Yeah, it's pretty common to do overtime, unfortunately, in Japan. It's different in Romania. We don't have this included. When you do overtime, you just report how many hours of overtime you did, and then you get paid for um, that. It's good that you get paid. Like, I yeah. also have some uh, to talk, time to talk about, uh, sorry, hear about uh, work at. PwC in other countries like Australia and then in the United States and for example in PwC in the US they didn't get paid for the overtime maybe they get higher salary but yeah so some com countries don't pay for the overtime yeah it depends also in Romania on the companies not all pay for the overtime mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and after overtime you also have to go to Nomikai no thank you <laughs> <laughs> yes I, I agree <laughs> true um, like some of Nomikai's with your, how to say, direct supervisor is sometimes paid by company's payment expense. So yeah, I'm more willing to join those <laughs> because I can't have a free dinner. But um, yeah, mostly they are personal one and you need to spend money. Yeah. But isn't it true that uh, if you go with the senpai, they will pay for your consumption? Yeah, like right? it's more common because they get higher salary and mm -hmm. maybe they feel nicer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we said about the salary, the overtime that is included for 30 hours per month. What I other benefits would you have? Yeah, so that time is pretty close to seven, but um, yeah. I try to answer as much as I can. Um, so the benefits uh, included some language learning, uh, going to language school for learning English and stuff like that. Um, you can actually do the online English learning school, which costs, or like you can go to the language school and they will be paid out around by around. 1,500 euros for a year and then also we will be paid separately for the transportation cost from home to the office mm -hmm. 
Um, if we have some business trip, we will also be paid for the transportation and accommodation separately. Um, yeah, and also we will be uh, we will join the automatically to the pension plan, in which will the company will fund each month for the pension with a fixed amount. There are several pensions that actually you will be able to join. Uh, when you enter companies Yeah, and there are sometimes discount code and stuff like that coming from companies if you use some like services mm -hmm. Cool So, okay, if we're in the company, we know what the salary is What about uh, like quitting the company because you work there for one year and then you quit? Was it hard and how is the process just briefly? Yeah, like before like I actually quit, uh, I was really nervous of how they will perceive because uh, they train us, the fresh graduates, so hard in order for us to be a professional and like they spend a lot of money and time on that. But um, yeah, like I was um, trying to be really careful about the order of speaking to which person first and the next because I don't know sometimes uh, some job manager and the supervisor needs to know those things like uh, as early in order for them to kind of manage how to assign projects to other people and how to take over the job so I had some like uh, my career development supervisor called coach and I firstly spoke to the coach about uh, my wish to quit and then he forwarded me to a supervisor of himself which um, kind of has more uh, responsibility and then I kind of had to set uh, another meeting with him and have another meeting and talk about what I want to do, why I want to quit, uh, what my uh, future career wants to be and then after he accepted it um, I will I was um, forwarded to one of the executive of the company and I had a meeting and meantime the supervisor also forwarded the notification to my job manager and we also started proceeding how to take over my tasks yeah and then I also talk with other uh, people who work closely to me but yeah so I spoke with somebody who did my who's in charge of my career first and then I spoke with his manager and then I spoke with job managers and proceeded for the taking over the business uh, taking over my role and yeah and also had to fill some online form for uh, more administrative things Mm -hmm. So it's quite a long process as well, like around four or five meetings you have or something like this. Yeah. Like, mm. yeah. I think it's also a little bit Japanese thing. Uh, it's not only about uh, procedure, but I had to keep in a good relationship and stuff like that. I, I must say that. I wanted to keep in good touch with them, so yeah. Yeah, not burning the bridges. Yeah, yeah. Right. I like the company still, so yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's really great. Uh, Victor is asking, what about labor unions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have labor unions in Japan, and yeah, I think in Germany it's also very important to protect uh, workers' rights and in case the working condition is not good uh, they might give a bit of like strikes or some claims actually I'm not quite sure about it um, I will probably follow you up on the chat after hearing and uh, doing a bit more research mm -hmm. but it exists and yeah some people really care if the company has labor unions or not because it's not always the case seemingly so yeah mm -hmm. 
Okay, and the last point would be just briefly if you we talked about like your firm, your specific case, like auditing, what about working in other fields of activity? How are the jobs perceived and the salaries? Yeah, like uh, speaking of my friend's career. Um, so if you work or if you get a job in a public sector or teachings, uh, you generally be considered as pretty good because uh, they are stable, uh, although they are not getting much pay in the beginning. Uh, we as Japanese care a lot about stability of not having the risk of bankruptcy. Yeah, but for teachers, I see they have to work a lot like overtime and yeah, it's a little bit stressful. And yeah, also make Japanese manufacturing is quite traditionally uh, well known and but they aren't um, that profitable in the last 30 years so nowadays there is a tendency that people prefer uh, global companies or like the multinational companies which pays you more and maybe having a bit of a different culture yeah, and there are also a few people who do the startup and also were interested in working in uh, venture companies, like new com startup companies where you get a bit uh, different uh, environment, not traditional, so a bit like unique and you get fast paced um, yeah, culture. Mm. So basically the public sector jobs are more, let's say, stable, but have a bit less pay. And people would like to work more in private companies because they have like better pay and also like a different environment. Yeah, like um, there are regional differences as well. People with a bit like a traditional mindset or like in r rural area, uh, since maybe there aren't many jobs opportunities in local area, uh, public sectors uh, like uh, government like city office uh, teachings are really good but if you go to Tokyo there are a lot of companies and they pay you better in general uh, so yeah they'll be considered as great but um, yeah if you work in a public sector there are some certain advantages about the pension you get a bit different kind of pension and stuff so yeah it really depends on your priorities so this was it pretty much what we, we wish to, to touch on this, these specific topics. I hope you found it interesting. If you still have questions, you can leave them in the comments and we will uh, answer to you after the live finishes. Yep. If you want, you can uh, tell us even now if you have some feedback. Did you like it? Was it interesting for you? Yeah. Um, I must say that uh, talking about a job is sometimes a little bit difficult because I also need to care about um, how other people will perceive of like especially my colleagues and so on. Probably they will not hear about it but yeah. So anyway, thank yes. you for your attention. Mm, it's, it's also very complex so we just touched a bit like the surface of the whole system especially in his company's case. And you already saw it was quite complicated. Um, and yeah, some of the parts we, we need to leave them out because he cannot really speak openly about all the things he did, obviously. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I try to speak as much as I can. So. Mm -hmm. I see people are saying thank you. Yeah. 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 Thank you for your participation. Mm. Thank you so much and um, we will see <coughs> each other in a future life probably. Yep. So till then take care and uh, have a nice weekend guys. Yeah. See you. <laughs> Bye.